you have always said that it is impossible to time the markets. Yet, if we look at your track record, you have had amazing timings with some of your key decisions. You got out of the stock markets in 1969-70. You got back in 72, 72, 74, when the markets were really cheap. You did the same thing in 87, 99, 2000. And today, we are sitting on a significant amount of cash when the markets are going down. My question is, how do you time the big market moves so well? We'd like to offer you a job first. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> the, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, obviously, we haven't the faintest idea what the stock market is going to do when it opens on Monday. We never have had. We have never made, Charlie and I, I don't think, in all the time we've worked together, and I'll tell you something later on maybe about how learning takes place, but we have, we have never, uh, I don't think we've ever made a decision that, that where either one of us has either said or been thinking we should buy or sell based on what the market is going to do. Uh, no. Or, or for that matter, on, on what the economy is going to do. We, we don't know. And the interesting thing is, sometimes I get some credit someplace for the fact that, you know, how wonderful it was that we were optimistic in 2008 and when everybody was down on stocks and all that sort of thing. You know, we, we, we spent a big percentage of our net worth at a very dumb time. <laughs> and and I, I shouldn't say we, it's I. We spent about 15 or 16 billion dollars, which was a lot bigger to us then than it is now. We spent it in the last few weeks, there were a period of three or four weeks between Wrigley and Goldman Sachs and General, we, at a terrible time, as it turned out. I mean, I, I didn't think, I didn't know whether it was gonna be a good time or a bad time, but it was a really dumb time. And I wrote an article for the New York Times and Buy American and all these things. Well, if I'd had any sense of timing and waited six months until, I think the low was in March, and in fact, um, I think I was on CNBC maybe that day or something, but, but uh, I totally missed that opportunity. I totally missed, you know, in March of, of, of 2000, 2020. Uh, we, 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 we have not been good at timing. We have, we have been reasonably good at figuring out when we were getting enough for our money. And we had no, had no idea when we bought anything. Well, we always hoped it would go down for a while so we could buy more. And we hoped even after we were done buying and ran out of money that if it was cheap, the company would keep buying, in effect, taking our interest up. I mean, that's stuff you could, you could learn it in fourth grade. But but it's not what's taught in school. And, I mean, it, it, so never give us any credit. Well, actually, give us all the credit. In, I mean, go out and tell everybody how smart we are, but we aren't. <laughs> they, it, we, we, we haven't ever timed anything. We've never figured out insights into the economy. I mean, when I was, when I was, about 11 years old, March, March 12th, I guess, 1942, you know, at uh, March 11th, you know, got, I bought stock when the Dow was 90, well, it was 101 in the morning. It was 99 at the end of the day, I think. And, uh, you know, now it's 34,000 or maybe it's a thousand less than it was on Thursday. <laughs> it, uh, but, you know, I just, you know, it's one decision that it's a good thing to own American business. And, and it, you know, if the Harvard Endowment had come to see me and it's 11 year old and, <laughs> and uh, you know, or General Motors pension fund or something, and you know, they say, well, no, but we have to have a balance and we have to maybe have 60% of, uh, and then we have to sit around every three months and listen to a bunch of managers. They, they'd have just done better if they'd just taken some darts and throwing them and, and just said, we're going to be in America 
50 years from now and 100 years from now and we'll do better in stocks than we will in bonds. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how hard people make what a simple game it is. But of course, if, if they told everybody what a simple game it was, they, 90% of the income or more of, of the people that were speaking uh, would disappear. So it's really a little too much of us to expect of human nature that people will explain why they really aren't adding any value to what you can do by yourself. Or actually, you're, you know, I hate to use the example, but it, you can have monkeys throwing, throwing darts at the, at the page and you know, take away the management fees and everything. I'll, 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 I'll bet on the monkeys, but I, not, I don't consider them a superior species and I don't want them to move next door instead of my next door neighbor or anything, but that is the way, it, it's just the way it has to be.